This video covers how to change the brake pads on a Polaris Ranger. With the vehicle on the ground, you're going to want to break loose all of the wheel lug nuts. And before you jack up the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have a jack stand nearby. And you're also going to want to put a wheel chalk on the rear wheel so that it doesn't scoot away. All right, so now we're looking at the caliper and the rotor disc. And if you look towards the back of the caliper, you will see you have two caliper bolts. This is a wheel speed sensor on the passenger side, caliper bolt, and then another one lower. Uh, those are also 14 millimeter. So I'll just zip those off real quick and you'll get a chance to see. So there's one right below the wheel speed sensor. I'm just going to loosen it up. And then you have one more down a bit lower. Let's see. Make sure that you can see that. And just be sure to make sure that you keep your washer, your crush washer, and put it back into your magnetic holder so you don't lose anything. So now I'm just removing the insert, which holds the slide from uh, backing out. And then coming back to the front, and we can now push this slide pin back. All right, so now you're gonna grab and compress holding this face, the mounting of the caliper, and compress it back. Then I grab the <clears throat> pads, and I press back two, and then I just press this piece in. And what you can do then is just walk off the pad. Then you just do the same thing. And it just slips right on off. Then, when you're looking at your two pistons, on this model, you can actually muscle them back into place. If you're having difficulty muscling them into place, you can use a, uh, a big um, uh, pliers, or um, I typically use just a piston, caliper piston tool, um, and I just walk that back in individually. So, you just insert here and here and walk it back. Or you can grab on the back of the uh, caliper and the piston and force the piston in. Um, that is if you don't happen to have one of these tools. So if you went down to the tool store to get one of these caliper piston press tools, mm -hmm. all you would do is screw it into place, eventually it'll push against the rest of the caliper unit and you'll be able to rock and roll. So you'll just compress it. Now the more you compress one side on a dual caliper, uh, dual piston unit, you'll notice that this one will start to walk out. So it's kind of like a battle of walking the two of them. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do this with uh, with standard tools that you'll have around your house. So that's now compressed and that's still open. Alrighty, so the other way you could do it is to grab from the back and the front and just squeeze and compress. And that will give you the same effect. You just want to make sure that you're on metal on metal surfaces. 
and you'll be golden. So now that everything's compressed, you can now put on your new pads. One side of the pad is going to be facing backwards. So you just slide it back on. Oh, so not easily. Alrighty, so you've slipped one side on, and you just come on to the other side. Sometimes you gotta press everything back so that you can just slip it right on in, like such. And then you're gonna have the other one facing forward, like so. Click, slip in. Sometimes you gotta work with it just a little bit and then bring it to the other side and you want to make sure that when you're putting these pads on that you've got them parallel because if they're at an angle when you're trying to put them onto your uh, slide pins you're just not going to have any look so you're going to pull it back out which will lock the pads in place that way you know that they can't slide anywhere and then you will um, then press it back on with the insert in the back back on so we'll go ahead and do that real quick and that'll ensure that the pads don't fall off so we'll just go ahead and put that back into the rear and you're just going to snug it up and as you snug it up you'll notice that this slide caliper is, is going to come forward and won't be allowed to go as far back. So I'm just snugging it up. And it's starting to push this slide pin forward past the point of which the pads can fall off. And now it's nice and snug. Now whenever you're doing anything like this and there's uh, a lot of rattling uh, going on with, with a component, you really want to make sure that you have some sort of thread locker on there. And uh, I, like to, I like to go the extra step and, and make sure that there is some form of thread locker on. So now we're going to go back towards the rear and we're going to put on our two 14 millimeter bolts that we took off originally and that's going to put our... Um, calipers back on and you've just changed your pads. This can be a little bit challenging when you're trying to line up your your caliper. So I just put a little bit of thread locker on. That way I know these suckers aren't going to come back off and I'm going to get a very pleasant phone call in the middle of a work day saying my brakes fell off. It wouldn't fall off without it but I'm a big fan of insurance. Yeah. And if it only takes another couple of seconds to add it, why not? Same on the lower. And then torque it down the spec. After you've checked all of your brake components, you will just reinstall your wheel. Put your washers back on. Put your lug nuts back on and torque them down to spec. At that point, lower it down and go test out your new brakes. I highly suggest pumping them up to make sure that you have proper brake prior to moving. This will make sure that the pads are making contact with the rotor prior to you getting into any sort of jams.
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.